Welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Uh, today we're going to talk about merger mania in the Canadian oil patch. And it might be a little bit early to call it a mania, uh, but we're going to talk about Torque Oil and Gas, White Cap Resources' pr proposed all-share merger uh, that was announced this week. Let's jump into it. So first off, if you want a, a little bit of an overview of white cap of the business and some valuation work, I did a video back in 2019 that's, that shows that valuation based on different uh, oil price scenarios. Feel free to check that out. Merger mania, starting to set foot in the Canadian oil patch. We know that Husky announced an all share combination with Synovus recently. recently. Now the merger between white cap and torque, which is white cap's second deal actually. Um, they've also are a they're also in the process of acquiring NAL resources for 105, 155 million, again, all shares uh, from Manulife. So while this deal does not involve a premium being paid to Torque investors, there are some interesting considerations for both Torque and white cap shareholders. And that's really what we're gonna talk about in today's video. We'll review the details of the transaction uh, and we'll also provide some key considerations for investors. So disclosure, I do not own shares in either company, neither Whitecap nor uh, Torque. And the second disclosure, uh, I bought a new microphone. So thanks again uh, for your feedback and, and your patience. Hopefully uh, the audio is much improved on these. Let me know. So let's start by looking at the uh, share price. And normally, as you know, I usually show a five-year chart, but with Canadian oil and gas stocks, it's just too painful, those five-year charts. So uh, what I did is I solved that by just looking at a six-month six month chart, which you can see here. And based on the recent six months, it actually looks pretty good. These almost look like tech stocks. And really, if you think back over the last two months, quietly, WTI has climbed from $36 a barrel to $47 a barrel recently. And you can see a pretty significant move in Canadian oil and gas stocks. So white cap, which is in the purple, and then torque, which is in the blue. White cap's up over 60% in the last couple months. On December 8th, you can see up here, the transaction was announced on the top right of your screen. It's an all stock combination. One share of torque gets you 0.57 shares of white cap. And if you look at the way the stocks are currently trading over here, they're trading at a 0.58 exchange ratio, so pretty close to the proposed uh, merger exchange ratio. Okay, pro forma metrics. So first of all, the enterprise value of white cap is going to increase based on the increased number of shares and from approximately 2.7 billion to 3.8, uh, assuming the share price stays the same. What I really want to talk about is production and CapEx. So you can see here, production for white cap on a standalone basis was 60,000 barrels per day. I'll note that's a decrease from 70,000, which is what they were running at back in 2019. So uh, production has come in for white cap, but with these acquisitions, it's going to increase to 100,000 barrels a day. That being said, on the CapEx side, white cap stand standalone was 200 to 250 million that's really not increasing much. So production's going from 60 to 100. CapEx is almost flat, you know, a small increase, but really they're holding CapEx flat. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And of course, uh, they've got the dividend going up slightly here uh, when the transaction closes. One other thing to mention, they do uh, talk about 43 million in corporate and operational synergies uh, with the transaction. Asset base, I didn't spend a ton of time here, but again, take you back to the video we did in 2019. White Cap talked about having eight years of drilling uh, drilling locations and drilling uh, inventory. Now they talk about having 10 years of drilling inventory pro form of the transaction. And based on the map, you know, not a significant difference um, in their operations in terms of asset base and where they're located. And they do maintain a liquid focus, 79% uh, liquids. Okay, now what about 2021 financial impact? Whitecap gives us a few of these figures in their investor presentation. We'll use them as a, as a baseline. And then obviously you can, you can do your own homework to stress test, stress test those. Uh, here we go. So the first thing I wanna talk about, free funds flow per share. 
Now you can see white cap standalone, 30 cents of free funds float per share. So again, that's funds flow minus CapEx. And then over on the right, pro forma, 51 cents. So a 70% increase or accretion to free funds flow per, flow per share, uh, which is impressive. Um, and I guess the one thing that I want to bring us back to the CapEx comment we made earlier, you know, the funds flow on their own, if I can just pull this up. Yeah, funds flow on their own are just growing by 19%, but because they're not moving up the CapEx, um, that's where you get this free funds flow per share 70% higher. So I don't want to say it's misleading. I think it's accurate, um, but clearly the company's plan is to continue to hold back CapEx spend in the short term. At a certain point, that will catch up to them. But for now, they're going to free up significant free cash flow. And... Uh, the other big one here, and to me, this is the best part of the deal for white cap shareholders. Debt to EBITDA previously um, was 2.6 times. Not the highest. You know, there's companies um, in the space that were higher levered, but not the cleanest either. You know, a meaningful amount of debt. Pro forma, both of these transactions, their leverage is actually coming down. So debt to EBITDA down by 30% uh, based on 2021 EBITDA. And you can see here down below, again, if I can pull this up, the white cap standalone had a billion dollars of net debt. They're gonna have 1.2 billion pro forma. So they're meaningfully growing their, their operations and production and net debt is staying close to the same. So I think hats off to them. I think that's a, a great part of this transaction. Not only are they growing, uh, it's also slightly accretive, but the leverage is coming down. Governance is another one that's, I thought, just an interesting discussion here. We know that incentives drive behavior, and one of the impediments to mergers and acquisitions in general is that some C-suite executives, board members, will likely lose their jobs or positions, and, and these are, as we know, pretty well-paid and desirable positions. So there's a bit of a disincentive to have your company be sold or merge with another entity. Um, in this case, you know, credit torque management and board for recommending a deal which should benefit its shareholders, despite ultimately costing them their positions, right? Um, white cap management is going to run the combined business. I think here CPP, so one of Canada's pension plan, has a 29% ownership stake and Scott Lawrence's presence on the board, that probably helped here, um, you know, from a government's point of view. But again, uh, credit to torque management and board for recommending a deal that probably not in their personal best interest, but should benefit its shareholders. And I think it'll be interesting to see if this transaction, you know, along with Husky, does this open the doors for further consolidation? I think, you know, mergers all share deals in the sector. Does it start to add pressure to other management teams to explore these alternatives? Lastly, uh, before we have some concluding thoughts is the dividend and you know, white cap monthly dividend will be increased by 6% um, in April 2021. So just after the deal closes, and that's, you know, about a 4% yield based on the current share price. We'll note that white cap cut its dividend in half earlier this year and Torque had suspended its dividend completely. So Torque shareholders are going to get white cap shares, which now have a dividend, which is great for them. White cap gets, you know, their white cap shareholders get their existing dividend and get a little bit of an increase baked in. To be honest, I don't, I don't know if they needed to increase the dividend. Uh, I guess it's sort of the cherry on top to investors to make sure everyone votes in favor of the deal. If you look at the chart down below, you can see that white cap historically had paid out more in dividends. Obviously, times have been tougher, um, and uh, but they they are looking to. I think based off of this new base, uh, start to grow dividends again. And, and their forecast is based on $45 WTI. So WTI is at 47, if it holds from here, great. Uh, if we see more weakness again, they, there could be a difficulty there. So conclusion, I think overall it looks like a positive transaction for shareholders of both entities. Um, market likes the deal. Uh, it also likes higher oil prices. That's obviously one of the key reasons why the share prices are up so much. Um, but I do think it's important to point out it's tough for employees. Um, decent portion of the 15 million year one synergies are likely going to be, you know, uh, some folks uh, losing their positions. 
I think we should definitely expect to see more consolidation in the oil patch. Share transactions are more likely than cash deals. We know that there's limited credit availability or appetite for the sector. There's also a $20 million break fee on both sides here. So barring any major change in the oil outlook in the next few months, I'd, I'd expect this deal to close. And I, I really like what Whitecap setting themselves up as a consolidator. I really like the fact that they're delevering their balance sheet in the process. To me, that's the that's kind of the, the best part of this whole transaction if I were a white cap uh, shareholder. And they, you know, based on their 2021 forecast numbers, it's 11% free funds flow yield based on the current share price. Um, so up to you to decide whether that's attractive or not. Um, we know oil and gas can be can be volatile. But, you know, if they deliver on 2021, like they like, like their forecast suggests, uh, that's an 11% free funds flow yield. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you like the transaction? I'd especially love to hear by anyone who from anyone who owns shares in in white cap or torque. And maybe, yeah, let me know, predict the next merger, which is the next combination that we're, that we're going to see. That's it for today's video. I'll be back uh, with more content. But until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.